Okay, boys and girls, today we are talking about the 3DK MAK, and what I may say might just be the best hunting knife ever made. Let's jump into it. Okay, guys, so like I said, we're talking about the Three Dog Knives Multi Animal Knife, or MAK, as we'll call it for the video, and we're going to be talking about its hunting qualities, its camp qualities, and why I think that this is a really strong contender, whether you're looking for a blade that will perform well in the field, skinning and dressing game animals, or a blade that will do really well at camp tasks such as feather sticking and fire starting as a whole. So let's jump right into it. So unfortunately, I can't really do to YouTube show the hunting qualities of this blade because it's a little bit graphic and they call it um, like shocking content or something along those lines. So I can't really show you guys any game processing, game processing with this uh, beautiful blade, but rest assured it is very good at processing small game animals and large game animals. It's a very comfortable blade in hand and uh, it's easy to choke up on, get a good grip and uh, do many different types of and skin and gut animals very well. So rest assured it is good at that and I think that overall especially with the steels like M390 or K110, it'll have excellent edge retention for you, and uh, it will do anything that you need it to do. Not to mention, something that I will also continue to talk about is the blade thickness being 530 seconds, or around 0.15. It is a pretty stout blade, but it's not too stout, it's not overly robust, so it's a good stout steel stock to begin with but it is also not super thick and tanky, so it'll still allow you to do a good amount of fine work. I also like the fact that it's a very high flat grind, so the actual cutting edge does not have a large portion of steel behind it, so it cuts overall pretty well, and that's paired uh, even in feather sticking. So overall, it's a pretty fantastic hunting blade, but I think that there's a lot of knives that can be pushed into hunting, as I've mentioned in other videos. You know, a lot of times I use knives like my Bark River Bushcrafter, which does just fine at hunting, even though it probably is not quite designated or, you know, really touted to be a hunting knife. It just does the job well because it's a sharp piece of steel that will uh, slice fit flesh well. So, Anyways, the hunting qualities of this knife are definitely there, and I think the size overall lends its hand to doing small and large game processing just fine. The only knock I kind of give this blade is that it is a stonewashed finish, and in steels like K100, you have to kind of wash yourself around things like blood because you can get rust, so just bear that in mind. But with things like M390, even if they are um, stonewashed, they do a pretty good job at repelling rust, so just bear that in mind. But now let's talk about camp qualities, things that I'm far better with and far more able to explain. Okay, so as far as this blade goes with camp qualities or being a good camp knife slash bushcrafting knife, which is certainly my wheelhouse, I think this blade is overall pretty fantastic. Now, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, depending on how you think of it, uh, this blade is not a Scandinavian grind, which is not a huge deal to me. In fact, sometimes flat grinds, full flat grinds, work better for certain applications, especially things like feather sticking far better than Scandinavian or even Scandivexes do. So for me, I'm not 100%, like I won't rule blades out if they aren't automatically Scandinavian grinds, so I realize that they're not as easy to sharpen. You know, if you do have a leather strop, which I've mentioned in the past is a part of my field sharpening setup, you know, a leather strop doesn't really mind any type of grind in particular, it will hone them all. So overall, it's not a huge deal to me, and where I really look for the pivotal points in a blade for their either being good or bad in the outdoors is really the blade thickness and the blade length. And so with this blade, it shares a lot of similarities with one of my most favorite outdoor blades, which would be the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. And uh, it's about the same size as far as blade length goes, as you guys can see there. And it's also the same thickness as the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. And like I said, it's 530 seconds, which is a very nice thickness for me. I think it's a really good balance. It's a thickness that you can do a lot with. You know, you can baton with this blade without really too much concern of it breaking or bending or having any negative 
effects, but it's also not overly thick. So overall, it's a really good balance between being thick enough to handle heavy duty tasks, but not overly thick so that you can still do finer tasks. In addition to that, the handle is definitely very comfortable. Uh, I do enjoy the fact that they have cuts on both sides of the handle, allowing you to either pinch grip, which does help with hunting and skinning uh, types of types of grips and obviously helps you in that regard. But in addition to that, it also allows you to get a good grip when you do things like chest levers and when you're trying to take a large material down or do material reduction for different um, bushcrafting tasks and processes, whether it's involved in uh, building shelters or creating traps. This is definitely a handle that lends itself very well in that regard. There's no real sharp ends. So aside from that, other really notable features about this blade, this one is sharpened or its spine is, has been sharpened or ground so that it will strike ferro rods very well. Hopefully the video was pretty evident of that. This thing, when I put it to a ferro rod and was striking, it was really biting into that ferro rod and I could see it throwing huge sparks and uh, it was really just ripping up that ferro rod, which is ultimately what you want. It does take a lot of material off the ferro rod itself, but at the same time when you have that, it really does throw a good amount of very hot sparks that will catch anything on fire. Maybe not anything, but a lot of things on fire. So I definitely appreciate the fact that this has a sharpened spine and that definitely works very well. Now, another thing that I'm not super wild about on this blade in particular is the fact that it does have a jimping and the jimping is not horrible though the jimping is a little bit shallow and a little bit large and it definitely can be uncomfortable so if you are using this especially barehanded do keep in mind that uh, it is a little bit uncomfortable for the jimping however the nice thing about the jimping or at least where the jimping is placed is that it's easy enough to override so your thumb is back here you can just easily move your thumb up to where there is no more jimping on the spine and it's just fine and comfortable overall it wasn't a really huge deal for me but the jimping is something that i'm not necessarily a huge fan of as you can tell i don't really like any type of jimping on my blades at all so definitely a little unfortunate but it's certainly uh, so that you can work around. So the last point to really mention and something that I think is really awesome about the MAK is the fact that it is super customizable from the factory. So, you know, you can get different types of blades, handle material, or different types of blade steel, handle material, even different sheaths. Uh, just, you can get many different things or you can get many different options for this blade to fit your specific needs. If you want a more budget-oriented MAK, you can go with something like N690. If you want something a little bit more premium, you can step it up to K110 or M390 and get either the stainlessness or toughness that you are desiring or aiming after. And that's the thing that I really enjoy about this blade is that you get a good design, a solid design, that you can really spec and make your own. You can also have them opt for a sharpened spine or a non-sharpened spine. And so you can have them make up these blades in many different ways to fit your exact needs. And that's what I really enjoy about the MAK itself. Now this one does have the tan G10 handles and I definitely like the G10 because it's uh, very weather resistant and it's very, very traction oriented and uh, very comfortable also reasonably climate neutral. So those are some serious pros to it, but overall, any way that you get this blade made, it's going to really be a very nice blade for you. Not to mention it is also made in Alaska, which is a pretty, pretty rare thing, but ultimately pretty awesome. So that is the 3DK MAK. It is a really unique blade and I think it's fantastic for hunting, it's fantastic for bushcrafting, and it's an overall awesome camp blade that is good at many different tasks and just about any task you would throw at it in the camp life. So hopefully you guys check this blade out 
and uh, if you do, you will not be disappointed. It is definitely one of my favorites. It is pretty fastly actually replacing the Bushcrafter in a lot of my outings, though I still do love the Bushcrafter, but the MAK is a fantastic option. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you liked looking at this blade. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.